Now, for a couple of months, I've been talking about my desire for the WWE to put the World Heavyweight Championship on the line at the Royal Rumble. And in the interest of providing proper and full context, I wanted that done in part with the factor being that once Rollins vacated the belt, they would wait until the Royal Rumble to crown a new champion. Now, I, I know that wasn't going to be the most realistic scenario because the company wasn't going to want to go a couple of months without a world champion because it's a big marketing device for them. You know, it was a little more of an idealistic type of thing. But nonetheless, I was still excited when I found out the WWE was going to put the WWE World Heavyweight Championship on the line at the 2016 Royal Rumble. And with the story that they've got, one versus all, you've got your tagline for the event. And, you know, it's exciting because it is something different. We've only done it once before, and that was all the way back in 1992, and we still talk about the greatness of that Royal Rumble match for many reasons to this day. So in a period of time where we're looking for something different, something fresh, the fact it's been two and a half decades since it's been done, I think the timing is right. And frankly, based off of the way the WWE had booked things over the past couple of months, I felt they had booked themselves into a corner where they really had no other choice but to kind of kick the reset button here at the 2016 Royal Rumble and go in this direction because it could do a better job of launching you towards WrestleMania as opposed to doing the status quo of what you've done for so many years. The Rumble winner gets the title shot at Mania. I thought it was time to shake things up a little bit and do something different. And in theory, they are here. And I like that. But now over the past week or two, I've started to see reports on the interwebs talking about uh, this whole thing is going to happen, but there are no plans to take the strap off of Roman Reigns, meaning Roman Reigns would enter the Rumble, it's one versus all, and he's going to win the whole shebang bang and he's going to walk out of the Royal Rumble with the title. And when I look at it, and when I see those reports, I could actually see the WWE doing this. Because in a lot of ways, it's a reflection of their current product, where so many things just end up being a colossal waste of our time. There's a lack of significance and lack of meaning with whatever does happen. There's no real payoff. There's no satisfaction that comes from hardly anything that this company does. So what would be any less fulfilling or any less satisfying than doing this whole thing, the belt on the line, Roman Reigns has to defy all of the odds, it's one versus all, just to sit there and turn around and have him win the damn, keep the damn title anyways. What a colossal, epic waste of fucking time that would be. To me, Roman Reigns winning the 2016 Royal Rumble would be stupid. And here's why. I break this down into two categories. First, the Reigns win itself for the Royal Rumble, and then what it means potentially for WrestleMania. When you look at Ro Roman Reigns excuse me, winning the 2016 Royal Rumble, you know, to me, part of the thing of the Royal Rumble is doing something new. And that's in some ways what the Royal Rumble has always represented in a lot of ways. It's a chance to kick off the year with something new, something fresh, giving somebody a shot at the top. You know, it always represented a bit of freshness, a bit of newness to me. And with what you're doing this year, with putting the title on the line, it's been so long since you've done it, it is new. It is fresh. So why would you sit there and go against the grain for everything that the Royal Rumble represents to me and many others in a lot of different ways by maintaining the status quo and having Roman Reigns keep the damn belt anyways? So this is like an exercise of futility. What's the freaking point? There's no payoff here for the fans. There's no payoff here for the Roman Reigns character. And there's no payoff to the product as a whole. You did all of this just to waste a bunch of friction and motion just to sit there and keep things the exact same damn way. That's just dumb. And then when you look at this from a kayfabe standpoint, when you look at the McMahon family and the authority as a whole, as a group, these are supposed to be hated villains. These are supposed to be the heels of the heels, and understandably, legitimately so. But now you've had the McMahon family, and in particular Vince McMahon now, get to the point where he's so bothered by this that he's actually bothering to appear on television each and every single week, mind you, that now we sit there and we go through all these semantics and all these different things and Roman Reigns is overcoming everything and now we get to the point we've reached the big climactic moment. It's Roman Reigns one versus all in the 2016 Royal Rumble. How stupid would that make the freaking authority look? How stupid would that make Mr. McMahon's character look if they put Roman Reigns into this damn match and he just won it anyways? 
Now you sit there and you look at that authority type of leadership fi figure, those villains, and they lack credibility to you. Because the one thing they're trying to accomplish, the one thing they're trying to get done, they can't even fucking do that right. Furthermore, when we get to the entire roster, you're talking about 29 other people trying to vie for the title. If none of them can manage to beat Roman Reigns in a situation where they don't even have to make a pin or submit, they just have to get him over the top rope, and none of them are smart enough to band together to eliminate Roman Reigns and guarantee that if nothing else, somebody new is going to win the title, then how weak does that make the rest of the roster look? And how stupid does it make the rest of the roster look? And how much does it make the rest of the roster lack in credibility? I think it does significantly, and it does significant damage to the roster. You could say, I'm looking a little too deep into this. Maybe I am. But what if I'm not? And I don't know that I necessarily am. And when I look at this, too, when you look at the Reigns Rumble win and starting to envision what you're going towards for WrestleMania, it creates a predictable WrestleMania or a not believable WrestleMania title match. Because you either are going to know the finish beforehand, it's going to be telegraphed, or it's going to create something where Reigns beats all these people in the Royal Rumble. Now one of these asshats is going to go to Mania and beat him one-on-one. -on -one. We're not going to buy into that shit. We're not going to believe into that shit. And again, it's going to hurt the credibility of the product. And ultimately, what I don't understand is if you're trying to create a new star, but at the same point in time, you don't want to fall into the John Cena 2.0 bullshit, why would you do everything you can to book him like Cena and make him John Cena 2.0? You know, my thing is, is if you're going to book somebody like John Cena, then it might as well at least be John Cena because he can at least talk on the fucking microphone, something Rain still cannot effectively do, especially on a consistent basis. Nobody can do Cena better than Cena. So why in the hell would you want to make Reigns Cena? And by booking him in this fashion, where he overcomes all the odds and the obstacles to the point where now, similar to what you've done with Cena for so many years, he no longer has barriers or obstacles to overcome. He is the barrier and obstacle to overcome. Why in the fuck would people want to get behind this guy? Why the fuck would people like this guy? Why the hell would people want to support or cheer for this guy? You're doing the exact same thing with Roman Reigns. You're making him Cena when he doesn't have some of the redeeming qualities, frankly, of a John Cena, and he doesn't have the abilities of a John Cena. That's stupid! should be creating new stars that do things in a different way, not booking them in the same damn way. If you're going to do that, instead of going with the knockoff, go with the original because the original will be better. Just wait a few months and then you do that shit. You do it next year. And then you look at WrestleMania. Roman Reigns walks out with the damn title. Now where the hell do you go from here to Fastlane and in particular WrestleMania 32? A show that there's going to be a lot of pressure for the WWE to deliver in a big way because they're trying to put over 100,000 asses in the seats and they should be able to do so. Let's look at some of the potential opponents. We know Brock Lesnar's in the Royal Rumble. If Brock Lesnar goes into the Royal Rumble and he doesn't win the belt, but he somehow ends up being the challenger to Reigns at WrestleMania, the whole dynamics of this are fucked up. And now you get to a situation where it's a repeat main event match from last year's WrestleMania. We've seen it before. And while that match was good in and of itself, it's kind of an no-win situation. If Brock goes over Roman Reigns here then why the hell have Roman Reigns go over in the Royal Rumble just to drop the strap back to Brock so he could be a part-time champion? That's stupid. But then, doing this, where you've got Brock coming in, and he's facing Reigns just to have Roman Reigns go over, is going to feel predictable, and ultimately Reigns going over in this fashion is dumb, especially in this case. Last year, part of what really made it work is you had the out-of-the-money-in-the-bank winner Seth Rollins in your back pocket, and you utilized it, and you utilized it very well. You don't have that crutch. There's no money in the bank cash in to go off of this year. You don't have that threat. You don't have that option. You don't have that plot twist. Lester winning would be stupid. Reigns winning would be dumb. We've seen it before. It would be predictable or ridiculous. Either way, not good. And then when it comes to Triple H, you know, if Triple H entered the Royal Rumble or he didn't enter the Royal Rumble, he didn't leave the Royal Rumble show with the title, now you get to, let's say, him versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. That's a match I think could work. I think Triple H versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania could really, really work. But the only two ways it's going to work is, number one, Roman Reigns doesn't have the strap, and it's Triple H versus Roman Reigns in a personal grudge match, which their story would kind of suggest that's where they should go. Or, option two, 
is you would have to have Triple H win the Royal Rumble, and then Reigns has to go after him at WrestleMania. It's the only two ways the dynamics work. Otherwise, if Reigns keeps the belt, but then Triple H is going on to face him at WrestleMania, he's the challenger. Now you've got the crowd squarely behind Triple H. He's the babyface, and he fucked everything all up. And furthermore, at the end of the day, we probably know more likely than not, even with Triple H's consistent involvement on television, is that it's probably going to be predictable, and God's not going to overcome Roman Reigns. So you're going to see that finish coming, and you're already not going to like it, and you're really not going to like it once it happens. But then you look at other guys. Sheamus? You've been there, done that, and that most certainly isn't going to feel like a WrestleMania main event. Sheamus versus Roman Reigns? Ah, pfft. Alberto Del Rio, for Christ's sakes, he just lost the U.S. strap to freaking Callisto. I know he won it right back, but the fact is he's fucking losing to Callisto. And now all of a sudden he's going to be the guy as part of the League of Nations that will go on to challenge Roman Reigns at the 2016 Royal Rumble? Fuck that. Kevin Owens, bitch, please. Dean Ambrose, again, the dynamics don't work. At some point in time, you could go to that story. But now is not the time. This is not the place. It's not the location. And it's not the story. And it wouldn't work. It would be an epic fart. Speaking of epic farts, Bray Wyatt. He can't beat hardly anybody damn else. Now you're sitting there and it looks like to me almost positioning him to make a face turn at some point in time in 2016, which is probably necessary for the character any damn ways. It's worse they should have gone 12 to 18 months ago. Now you're undercutting so many things, both for Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns. If you have Bray Wyatt go on to face him at WrestleMania, and God forbid you actually have Bray Wyatt win the belt at WrestleMania 32, does Bray Wyatt really strike you as a WWE World Heavyweight Champion at this point in time? I don't think so. And then if we go back to the part-timers, and we go to the legends, you know, you could throw out The Undertaker. Maybe The Undertaker challenges Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. It sounds far-fetched, but far-fetched can happen. I doubt it, but you look at it. Here you go. Another one of these no-win situations. It's talked like I talked about with The Undertaker ever since he lost the streak at WrestleMania. You know, when he faced Bray Wyatt, it was a no-win situation for either character. Now here you go into WrestleMania 32. It's Undertaker, it's Roman Reigns. We know where the fuck the crowd's going with this one. We know where the fans are going with this one. And if you're not trying to turn Roman Reigns heel, and you're stupid enough to book that match, then you're morons and you deserve the consequences that come because you've created a full-fledged, unintended heel turn. Because either Roman Reigns beats The Undertaker and it's really, really stupid, or The Undertaker beats Roman Reigns and it doesn't feel right. And while I would be all for the, the old man, you know, the old guard getting one last run at the title, Roman Reigns is not the right guy to pass over to The Undertaker. And the dynamics of it just don't work, and it's not good for either character, and the story would be stupid. And then you get to The Rock. People will go to all the family connection. He was there for the 2015 Royal Rumble. Maybe he was there for the 2016 Royal Rumble. Oh, my God! The Rock's going to turn heel and become Hollywood Rock and all this other crap. Again, this is another one of these no-win situations. Because if The Rock goes over Roman Reigns and wins the title, you know he's going to drop it right back, so that makes it predictable and it makes it kind of stupid. Or if Roman Reigns goes over The Rock, now people are really going to resent him because now they're putting Roman Reigns over one of the biggest names in the history of the business, somebody that even the first time around John Cena could have beat. The whole point of this video is to hopefully help you see just why it would be ridiculous and stupid for Roman Reigns to retain his world title at the 2016 Royal Rumble. I mean, it creates all types of negatives and very, very few, if any, positives. You've got to take that strap off of him. Even if that means you come right back at Mania and you make him a three-time champion, then you want to begin your big, long run for him. You want to build up to maybe him and Cena at SummerSlam. You know, so be it. That's fine. I could deal with that. But what I couldn't deal with at this point in time is the ridiculousness and the stupidity to come if they decide to do all of this just to waste fucking time and keep things the same, keep the status quo, and have Roman Reigns stay the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. It's bad for the Royal Rumble, and it's going to be really bad for WrestleMania. In a horrible way, in my opinion, to start off this product in 2016. And that's all there is to it.